I hate that I lose my patience easily. Wow, okay, okay, that reaction, I like that reaction. What was your first initial reaction to that? Um, yeah, that I also hate, <laughs> I mean that this is true, that I hate uh, losing my patience. And um, I think during COVID that got uh, like very, very accentuated. I work as an ICU nurse Aww. and so working during COVID and the stress of everything and seeing people dying all the time, seeing people post all this stuff on social media that doesn't exist and like it felt very personally like what I was doing or going through like didn't matter, it wasn't real. Hey love, it's Kimmy. Welcome back. Today's episode is centered around perfection. My shirt could be read as I'm perfect or imperfect. Let's see what we hear today. James Spate and San Diego. Uh, my name is Jules Olson. I'm from New York. Uh, my name is Kimberly and I'm from San Diego. Esteban Ramos. Uh, been, I'm from Puerto Rico originally, but I've been in San Diego 15 years of my life. Uh, my name is Rachel and I'm from San Diego. Hi. My name is Ruben, I'm here from San Diego, local. My name is Vinny and I am from San Diego. Thank you for joining us today um, and sharing with us your thoughts. Um, could you read to me what my shirt says? <laughs> Imperfect or I'm perfect. Okay. Well, There's no space. Yes, and that's the tricky part of it. We were seeing if you were going to say, I'm perfect or imperfect, and we'll go from there. So we are doing an experiment, and we got all our friends and family to put in this little glass bucket thing um, what they dislike about themselves. Um, could you go ahead and pick out one and read it to the camera, please? I hate my lifestyle. Okay, what is your first thought on that? Um, for myself, I don't particularly think that it's true. However, there are things that I don't particularly like about the way that I live. I'd like to be more motivated or disciplined. Yep. Oof. I hate that I keep giving my boyfriend chances. Ooh! <laughs> well, your first reaction was, woo. Um, where did that come from? And I've been there. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> That's so wow, funny. Wow, so this is hitting home a little bit. This is a little... Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay, what about it makes it relatable? <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I think maybe we don't, like, or I guess my experience in the past has been I don't value myself enough, and I give people chances maybe when they don't deserve them, um, even outside of romantic relationships just like I don't value myself enough like they have to earn another like a second chance or like you know yeah so that's what hits home is okay. I've, I've, I do it yeah. I hate that I am a hoe sometimes a hoe? a hoe a hoe okay um all right Let's do, let's, how, what is your first reaction to this? Um, I feel like this applies to other people, but um, I, gosh, I feel like just the word alone is such a derogatory term. And why do you, why do you feel that way? Because I feel like it's usually focused more towards feminine people, mm -hmm. not necessarily any masculine individuals that are maybe doing the same things, but not getting called out for it. Instead, they get praised. Whereas females will get um, kind of shamed. You want to open it? Open it. And it says, I hate how I am scared to tell my friend what I really think. Wow, what is your first reaction to that? Um, I think a lot of us may be afraid to just because we're not, we're afraid of the unknown and what the other person may think or feel. But I think at, in the end, at the end of the day, that is something very important because it's how we set boundaries with our friends. And if we can't do it with our friends, then who can we really do it with? I hate that I lose my patience easily. 
Wow, okay, okay, that reaction, I like that reaction. What was your first initial reaction to that? Um, yeah, that I also hate, <laughs> I mean that this is true, that I hate uh, losing my patience. And um, I think during COVID that got uh, like very, very accentuated. I work as an ICU nurse and so working during COVID and the stress of everything and seeing people dying all the time, seeing people post all this stuff on social media that doesn't exist and like it felt very personally like what I was doing or going through like didn't matter, it wasn't real. And so with all the stress of that, I have found like especially during 2020 that my patience was like <laughs> this and any amount of stress or anything that was an inconvenience, it was like immediately like, why can't we just make things work, people? You know, like it didn't matter what it was. Um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like just as of recently that that is like very much something that I didn't ever like feel about myself or see in myself prior. I hate it when people say I am too sensitive. Okay. okay. What is your initial reaction to that? Um, I think uh, I hate it when people say I am too sensitive. Well, I think you shouldn't really care about what people say of you, right? Like, I mean, we're all sensitive to some topics, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and some topics are just sensitive in general to talk about, right? Like, I hate that I always seem to fall short of my goals. Aw, what is your first reaction to that? Relatable. Okay. Aww. <laughs> How is it relatable to you? Um, you know, I, I have a lot of goals and aspirations, but I tend to be like uh, unorganized. And when it comes to the initiation part of actually like fulfilling all goals, you know, that's, I fall short. Imagine if this was, person was a friend or family, what advice would you give them? Mm. Or yourself? I hate my lifestyle. What would I tell them? Well, change is rough. And to implement some type of lasting change is difficult. So maybe ask your friends to help you change your lifestyle. So like to implement, I guess, like safeguards. Because if you, I mean, that's under the assumption that somebody wants to change. Or if you want to just continue hating your lifestyle. But if you want to change your lifestyle, Give yourself some, some ways to change, and then, yeah. Okay. Help yourself along the way, I guess. Um, I would say that um, they are like, I don't know. They're the, they should. I don't know. They, they're it. Like they're what that person wants, and that person needs to deserve them in order for them to get a second chance, um, and like to really analyze the situation and make sure that the person that you're giving a second chance is actually deserving of it and not just because you think they're the only person that will want you or something. Because I feel like that's often where it comes from, maybe, is like, well, what if I don't find another person that like wants to be with me, you know? But if someone's not treating you well, then they don't deserve to be with you. Look beyond societal standards, I think to judge yourself because they're so fluent. They're so, they're so fluid in the way that they change. So if you were to let yourself and your self-worth be determined by something that is ever-changing and speedily decreasing, it's just horrible. And your self-esteem is gonna be nowhere near where it should be. It'll be way too low. Um, exactly that, that fear is normal. Uh, Going into it fearful is a good thing. It just means you care. Um, and at the end of the day, it, just, it should be done because that's, like I said, how you set boundaries with others. And if they really like love you and respect you, they'll love and respect those boundaries as well. So. I would probably say like being able to take a break from whatever stress that's in their life or whatever busyness, because I feel like that is where a lot of it comes from is like a place of overwork or over like stressed overstimulated taking a break and allowing yourself to rest and kind of recuperate um and then like deep breaths that's like one thing i 
have talked to my sister about this before and she was telling me like, oh, what I do all the time is like, I have to just tell myself to like, stop, like, just stop. Why are we so just like, we got to get this, this and this done, or we have to get it done like this way. But like, you just need to stop and say like, it's okay. Like, it's all right. I don't have to be this way because it doesn't feel good. Like in your body physically being impatient or like angry or upset, like doesn't feel good. And being able to just stop and like take a breath um, really helps. And it helped me, um, continues to help me. <laughs> I hate when people say I'm too sensitive. Well, for one, if a lot of people are telling you that you're sensitive, it's not necessarily that they're speaking that over you, but there must be some reality to that, right? So maybe you should just focus on uh, having a better self-image, you know, growing your, um, you, you know, your love for yourself. Because if, you're, if you really are sensitive to a lot of things, that means that you, uh, you kind of look at yourself as like a, kind of a victim, right? So you, you got to just look past all that and, and just grow a little more uh, strength, not just like physically, but emotionally, right? And at the end of the day, people are always going to tell you something bad about you, right? But you just got to move on, you know? Like, you got to just be who you are, you know? See, that would be really nice to know. Uh, initially, though, I feel like um, maybe clean up the little things th first or just work on the first steps. But um, staying consistent, I've, I've learned and read, is, you know, the best thing to do. I just need to internalize that more, you know, and other people who share the this issue or this thing that they don't like about themselves to full circle on how you saw my shirt um you said i'm perfect or imperfect what is a quality about yourself that you find perfect hmm or a quality that you are really you know proud of about yourself I don't know, I guess what is perfect about me is, I guess like where I'm at right now, um, maybe you know, there's always opportunity to move or to grow or whatever, um, or to change and grow and stuff, but maybe just like where I'm at right now is kind of the culmination of everything that like has already happened in my life and it'll continue to change, hopefully grow, hopefully I'll become more disciplined or whatever else I said it was motivated, motivated and disciplined. Um, but that doesn't mean that like now isn't still perfect, it, it is I guess what it should be in some sense. Mm -hmm. So would you find flawed or imperfect? Um, well, I'm like, which one? <laughs> I, I guess maybe my, my, the flaw that affects me the most, I'll go with that, is that I think everybody doesn't like me when I meet them. Like, that's like my go-to is like, oh cool, that interaction was terrible, they hate me. So that's probably my biggest flaw, would be like, that. Quality about yourself that you find perfect? Um, I'm trying to narrow it down to one. Um, no, uh, I think the way that I'm articulate and the way that I want to express certain things, um, I don't think I usually hold back on certain opinions, especially when they affect so many other people that goes beyond just myself. Um, I think the perfection is in the imperfection and just embracing those, that's what makes us all different and unique. Um, Honestly, not something I learned till after I had my kid, and uh, I'm very lucky to have had him at such a young age. I'm 26, so I've learned a lot of those lessons quickly, and I'm hoping to pass them on to this little guy. Because <laughs> we already heard all the good qualities, I just wanted to kind of be the devil's advocate and see um, what qualities or what character about yourself that do you, do you see as imperfect. Um, well, besides the losing my patience too easily, <laughs> which we just talked about. Um, I mean, kind of going along with that and something I have been thinking about just in the past like week or so was um, like being too critical of 
basically anything like whether it's myself whether it's other people um, it literally doesn't matter it could be the smallest thing and I just find myself like my thought patterns being just critical instead of I don't know, even just neutral would be great. Right. <laughs> like to just like yeah. see something or experience something and just be like, oh, that's like what just happened or like what is happening and just seeing for seeing it for what it is instead of like automatically, instinctually mm -hmm. like criticizing it. What quality about yourself do you find imperfect? My or quality flawed? I would say uh my ability to listen more than, than I talk, you know, because I okay. love to, to talk to people, right? But sometimes uh, for me, like I'm, I'm a sanguine phlegmatic, you know, the four personality types. Mm -hmm. um, there's four personality types, right? There's a, uh, it's called a sanguine, a phlegmatic, a choleric and a melancholic. Those are the four personalities that we all kind of fall into. And for me, I'm a sanguine phlegmatic, which means I'm very talkative, very open, you know. And sometimes I can backfire because I'm trying to listen to someone, but I always want to give my opinion. And over the years, I've tried to like really work on that and try to listen more, you know. Because that's how you really understand people, right? Not by talking, but by listening, you know. So I would say that that's one thing imperfect about me. Qualities or quality about yourself that you find is imperfect or is flawed? Um. Uh, I feel I could be a bit more secure in myself. Uh, I tend to be an insecure person, um, you know, kind of like some nervous anxiety uh, and sometimes a lacking of self-worth also. I uh, realize that it's not all about you, you know, even though most of the world tells you it's all about you, what you love, what you want to do, what you like. But I think in life, at the end of the day, like what really matters is, is serving other people, right? Because everything you have in life, at the end of the road, you're going to leave it all behind. All your money, all your everything, right? What you're really going to leave behind is the impact that you did to other people, right? How you served other people, how you helped other people, right? And that's not going to come with talking all the time. That's mostly going to come with listening, right? You know, that, and that's, that's really what I think. Like we should just learn to serve more people, right? Serve others, you know? Find something to, to help other people, right? Whether that's, you know, in a church or in a, in a community or some sort of program, you gotta, you gotta take your eyes off yourself a little bit, you know? And that's, that's what I would say. Today's episode was actually really fun. I had a really great time having people draw from this uh, bowl of things that other people wrote down that they disliked about themselves. Our episode today was on perfection. And to me, perfection doesn't really exist. Um, it came from where? It came from other people's expectations, right? Whether your family, your parents, um, your friends, those are their expectations for yourself. And the only person that truly matters is you and how you see yourself. So true acceptance and true love is loving yourself exactly how you are. And today, I'm signing off with saying, I'm Kimmy and I am perfectly imperfect.